We'd like to thank you for joining us today. And as we approach uh, the first anniversary of our channel, The Bible For You, on YouTube, we'd like to thank you for being here with us. And I'd also like to thank my colleague, uh, Peter Lynch, for joining us on our discussions. We like to talk about things related to the Bible. We like to discuss characters in the Bible. Uh, Peter, how has the experience been for you before we get into our subject here uh, over the past year talking about Bible related? It's getting stuff. better and better. <laughs> you know, we, we started off, we were a little uh, uh, insecure in our abilities. You know, we were very, very cautious and I think we're having more fun as we go. We're getting into more topics. Um, I love doing the Bible character segments that you mentioned. I love getting to do a chapter every week. We're doing more and more and, and we're coming up fast on our first full year. It's really exciting, so let's get right into the subject matter of what we want to talk about today. We don't want to sensationalize the Word of God, but sometimes what is written in the Bible is fairly sensational. And the, the topic of discussion today, we wanted to see how the coronavirus is affecting some of the countries in the Middle East, specifically Israel, Jordan, Palestine, the, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, um, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, and some of that. Uh, we received a letter from a friend of ours, a missionary in Jordan recently, and this is what he said. We just received this a couple of days ago, which we thought is very relevant to the topic that we wanted to talk about. My personal, and I will re we'll read from his letter, my personal preference is not to take the vaccination. However, three weeks ago, a new law came out here in Jordan that to go into any store or do any kind of banking by law, we have to take the vaccination. The very next morning, I went to the store and I was blocked. I could not get in. I couldn't buy phone credit. Overnight, everything changed. So I had to make some decisions regarding the vaccination. If I can't buy food, if I can't get phone credit or do any banking, that means I have to leave my ministry here in Jordan. So this friend of ours decided to take the vaccination and he's happy that he did take it, even though originally he didn't want to have the vaccination, but to remain there and continue his ministry and do the work, the good work of preaching the gospel and helping the poor, he decided to take it. Any reaction to his decision, Peter, on taking the vaccination, even though he was sort of anti-vaccine, yeah. but to stay in Jordan, he needed to take it? Well, I, I hate to see Christians uh, suffer for this. I think he made the, the right choice and as a added uh, benefit, he is now has hopefully very good protection from getting sick. Um, that's a pretty severe mandate that they have there in Jordan. We, we talk about mandates, but nothing we've talked about has been anything like what is being described here in this in this letter. Yes, I'd, uh, we'd like to say um, w the purpose of this discussion about the, uh, the coronavirus in the Middle East, we're not promoting the vaccination and we're not taking away the merits of the vaccination. It's completely a personal choice. According to your faith, be it done unto you. We've already done a segment on the vaccination and we kind of outline how we feel about the vaccination. Simply, we wanted to uh, talk about the specifics of the Middle East and how the coronavirus is affecting life there. But in relation to this letter that we received from Jordan, I wanted to read a few verses from Revelation chapter 13, uh, which talks about the mark of the beast. I would like to... Uh, this should be fun. Yes, <laughs> this should be fun. And the reason we wanted to do this is there's a lot of chatter among uh, on the internet on whether or not the vaccination is the mark of the beast. Um, now, the reason we specifically don't believe it's the mark of the beast is because the mark of the beast is gonna be something that's gonna affect the, the entire world. So if we look at the specifics of what's going on in Jordan right now, or the mandates in the United States, or mandates in any other country around the world, it's not like a blanket mandate Every country has their own rules and regulations, but it does say in Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17, and he had the power to give life to, unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, 
free and bond to take a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name and that number is 666 in the next verse so it does sound fairly eerie that something like this would be taking place in Jordan that this uh, that nobody can now buy or sell do banking buy phone credits without having the vaccine and that's why we thought it would be interesting to look at these verses that certainly is not the case in many parts of the world but we did want to look at the specifics of the Middle East in particular and how the coronavirus is affecting life there mm. how has it Peter do you have any specifics on on the economics of the Middle East since the coronavirus is well of course it depends very much on what country we're talking about there are uh, rich and well-connected countries there's countries like Jordan maybe not the richest but they are well connected you know they're they're friends and allies of some of the most powerful countries in the world and so you know they're they're going to have um uh early access to to vaccines i suppose you know to do a vaccine mandate you got to have plenty of access to to all the vaccines you need um on the other hand there there's countries like uh uh, Israel and Saudi Arabia, who are also, you know, fairly well off, and they they've been able to um, compensate people for for lockdowns, and uh, they have pretty good healthcare systems. If you're sick, you're probably going to get uh, a room. You're probably going to get some good uh, treatments. There's, you know, thankfully there's some good treatments out there, but they do cost a lot. Um, and then, you know, we have, of course have countries like Iran or Yemen, countries that are. Um, a little more on the on the lower end of things as far as resources go. Uh, Who cares about what happens in Yemen? Uh, sure, okay. as 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 we uh, talked about, you know, the, the, they're they're a country who who is who is a friend of of Yemen. Well, some would say maybe Iran is. Iran is another uh, fairly um, another country that's in a pretty tough situation. You have these countries that are kind of locked out of the rest of the world through sanctions and war. They um, even even if they had the money, they are not allowed to uh, import things. And we talk about this um, verse from Revelation 13. It's quite revealing in many ways of how the world works. This is how systems control people. You know, we see it in a country like the the Kingdom of Jordan. We also see things like that happening on a on a wider scale with uh, sanctions on countries. You know, if you're if you're in Iran, you are not allowed to have life-saving medicines. Why? Well, because your country is under sanctions. So, so there's a lot of opinion about Iran, especially in this country or in the West, that Iran is a bad place. Mm. And therefore, if they're suffering because they can't get the vaccination or they're suffering, uh, suffering economically because of the sanctions, that's a good thing. Let's punish them. But I think I remember uh, when I lived in the Middle East and I had uh, quite a few different friends from different Arab countries. And a lot of those people, the Arabs, uh, told me, uh, we love Americans, but we hate America. Hmm. And, uh, and I thought that was, I tried to figure that out in my own mind. And I realized immediately that those people had one opinion about the American government and another opinion about the Americans they actually met face to face. In other words, they were my friends. They were talking badly about America, but they, seem to love us well, as Americans. Do you think that uh, most Americans, you know, say people that you know, would they be in favor of lifting sanctions on Syria or on Iran? Do you think that that would be the, the popular desire in America? I think the majority of Americans perhaps don't even care. What they mm -hmm. care about is that gasoline prices are lowered or food prices are lowered and they don't really get into the politics of the Middle East, which is really a sad thing. Well, because it, it doesn't have to be, um, I guess, you know, we, we say the politics of the Middle East, but then the sad thing here is that this isn't about their their politics. I mean, this is, this is something that that one part of the world is imposing on another part of the world, you know, whether regardless of, of what their particular uh, politics are. We know that I Iran... Um, had a treaty with the rest of the world. Their, their, their politics were apparently doing the, the, the right thing, but yet... Um, well, they, we, they know, we know why that fell apart, that treaty, because Iran is enemy of Israel, Israel is friend of the United States, 
and therefore there are these warring uh, parties that get involved in this. It really, here in America, it's the politics of the Middle East. Mm. If you're on the left or if you're on the right, they seem to kind of influence the way you think. I think perhaps it would be better if we look at the people of Iran or the people of Israel or the people of Saudi Arabia and and look at them as human beings and and see how we can help them on a personal level. I, I, I would think that, you know, something like a global pandemic um, would get countries to put aside those kinds of uh, ways of treating each other. And I, I think there was a, an attitude, at least for a while, of like, oh, yes, the world's going to get together and and we're going to, you know, help each other out and get, get each other through this. But we're still seeing a lot of these um, these kind of bad ideas uh, playing out all the way through this this time of, of the pandemic where, you know, like you even said that, you know, countries might look at another country and say, oh, they're having a hard time. Well, that's that's a good thing. You know, we this is like one more thing to um, keep them down. And to your point about the bad ideas, I think that overshadow the politics of the region uh, come from a lack of really knowing God's word because Jesus said that we're supposed to love our enemies. Jesus talked about forgiveness, and it was exactly the opposite about the way the people felt during that day, like an eye for yeah. an eye, a tooth for a tooth, no forgiveness. He did something bad to me, therefore he needs to die. Yeah. There was no concept of forgiveness, and I think that's the spirit that pervades the, in the world today the spirit of unforgiveness and takes us away from the teachings of Jesus and how we're supposed to act as Christians and how we're supposed to see things as followers of Jesus. We've been going through the book of Matthew on this channel and oh my Lord, you know, you, you see the things that Jesus says. He's laying out his commandments. He's laying out his, his New Testament. Christians, you know, if we read that and got our opinion on Christians from that, we would think, wow, Christians must be the most wonderful, loving people you could imagine. And um, I, I, I do still like to think that. I think, I think we, we can, you know, live up to that. Uh, just, uh, unfortunately, Christians having the right ideas doesn't mean that the right things are going to happen in the world. And it's um, kind of frustrating because, you know, we see things like what we're talking about right now where poor countries suffer, rich countries have uh, an, an easier time of things. And, and this pandemic is unfortunately really bringing out, I think, a lot of the failings of the world as the world has not taken on the gospel, has not uh, taken on the, the attitude and laws of the kingdom of God. We're seeing the real problems that are associated with that. I wanted to uh, just quote uh, something that I have here. This is the Palestinian Authority uh, premier of their health ministry uh, by the name of Mohammed Shataye, and he was speaking to the Palestinian cabinet recently, about a month ago, and he said, not being, not, we're talking about the coronavirus in the West Bank and Gaza, Gaza areas where the Palestinian, most of the Palestinian people in that region live, apart from the Palestinians in Jordan, but he said that not being vaccinated is not a matter of personal freedom. Your personal freedom ends when your freedom harms others' health. So what he's saying here basically is that you have to get the vaccine because if you don't get it, you are infringing on the freedom of the person that lives in the next house mm. or the next apartment. Therefore, you need to get the vaccine. Mm. And that's kind of a prevalent point of view that we've heard that your freedom ends when my health is infringed upon, therefore you need to get the vaccine. Is that the right way to think about things? Do I have to, do I have to get the vaccine to protect your freedoms or is that where my freedom ends? What do we think about that concept? Of course, this is also the, the reasoning behind something like, like lockdowns or, or mask mandates. You know, when there's a contagious airborne virus, that, um, in some people's minds, throws a lot of rules into question or a lot of, you know, um, values kind of can go out the window in, in the name of, uh, of safety. 
different countries are very different, of course. And talking about these areas under the Palestinian Authority, these are some of the most uh, crowded areas in the world, especially if we're talking about uh, Gaza, but the West Bank also, where I yes. think this, this uh, message right. is, is from. Um, you know, we talk where, where about... Where you have people literally... It, yeah, yeah. Shoulder to shoulder. Uh, apartment buildings, uh, crowded apartment buildings, um, crowded, uh, lots of people living in the same house, you know. Um, so, and imagine, you know, what, what kind of healthcare system would the Palestinian areas have? Well, I'm sure they, they do their best, but they're not going to be the same as, you know, here. We, we know people who've gotten sick in the United States and they've been hospitalized, they've, they've received um treatments that that they may have needed we know one couple that was um i think they were one of them was put on a ventilator and and thankfully survived uh in some of these poor parts of the world that might not happen if you're sick you might not get to a hospital you might not even get a test you there's people who die when never people don't even know how they died they just know that well there's more people dying than than used to be dying so for a health minister that's that's his way of thinking and I guess it's understandable that that's what, that's where his mindset is going. I guess sadly, um, politics has played a very major role in the pandemic, mm -hmm. in the coronavirus. And, the, and certainly there are probably a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that we don't know about. Um, but it's unfortunate that politics is so prominent in a medical emergency such as the coronavirus, which is happening. Then you have parts of the world that are not as affected yeah. uh, by the coronavirus. I think Africa is one of them. Yeah, so I, I, think, I think what we see is some of these poorer populations also tend to be younger and have less obesity, less heart disease. So younger populations with less of those uh, kinds of circulatory and, and heart conditions, you're going to have an easier time with, with uh, the, the, a, a virus like this. And so when, when you talk about uh, Africa, for example, now th there's been some suffering in some of these countries, but um, they're not going to experience it the same as, say, um, Italy. And maybe they don't also report all the statistics of the deaths or who has the coronavirus or even if they know they have the coronavirus or not. Well, sure. Um, so, you know, uh, think of how the, the prices of, of tests have evolved over, over time. You know, a test used to cost several hundred dollars. You know, these countries weren't giving out tests right and left. You know, e even now they're probably limited testing. Yes. Um, well, it's a very uh, interesting subject. Uh, the, how does it play into Bible prophecy? Is this a foreshadowing of the mark of the beast? Um, again, I will say here that we don't feel it is the mark of the beast, but it is certainly something that most of us have never seen in our lifetimes. I want, I'd want i like to end with just some statistics here. Uh, we just have stats from Israel, Palestine, and Jordan, which is specifically that area uh, uh, that has so much Bible history. In Israel so far, since the pandemic has started, uh, there have been 1,336,027 cases of the coronavirus, 8,136 deaths, and 1,321,324 recovered. That's in Israel. In Palestine, or the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, which is roughly 50% of the population of Israel, they have had a total of 417,966 uh, coronavirus cases with about 4,317 deaths. And in Jordan, which is now mandated uh, the vaccine, if you want to buy or sell or do business, banking business and such things, the average number of affections in Jordan has been increasing over the last two weeks. And there are now about 2,136 new coronavirus infections reported every day in the country of Jordan. There have been 883,446 infections in Jordan since the pandemic began and 11,167 coronavirus related deaths reported in that country. So listening to those st statistics, if you compare the number of cases to the number of deaths, uh, you see how um, the, the outcome for someone who is sick is significantly worse in 
Jordan or in the Palestinian territories compared to a first world country like Israel. And then, then you see, okay, this is why they're thinking uh, vaccinate everybody, no excuses. Um, now, now, something we, we talked about earlier, you, know, uh, you might have mentioned this now, preparing people for something like the mark of the beast. Do you think that that is something that is happening in any conscious way? Or could it be um, coincidental? What, what, what kind of uh, preparation may or may not be going on with this? Well, I certainly think that the, the, there's a lot of antichrist, antichrist influence in the world today. I, and, and antichrist influence, I mean uh, anti-Jesus, anti-gospel, anti-Bible. So I think there could possibly be an agenda that we don't know about. I think uh, certainly the powers that be, the powers that control the news media, uh, have an agenda. And whatever that agenda is, we are marching forward closer and closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. So in answer to your question, um, I don't know for sure if the coronavirus is part of the Antichrist scheme, but it certainly could be. I guess time will tell whether this coronavirus is part of end time prophecy or not mm. as things unfold. Something that's come to my mind, you know, while, while thinking about, you know, this, this topic, uh, Jesus said once um, something about, you know, fret not thyself for tomorrow, for sufficient uh, unto, sufficient for today is the evil thereof. So we know there will be a mark of the beast, and um, that will be a fairly uh, frightful thing, I think, when it happens. You know, we hear about the the church being defeated and, and the, the beast making war with the saints and overcoming them, people fleeing, stuff like that. So um, not something to look forward to, but something that will happen. And uh, I, I think that um, we can focus on today's problems and, and not, um, not let ourselves get too worried about something that isn't here yet, as you know, Jesus said not to fret about those things. Um, you say that it's not something to look forward to, but on the other hand, I've heard in Christian circles, people look forward to it because they're also looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And they think that if the Antichrist uh, comes out and the mark of the beast comes and all of these things in the book of Revelation happen, mm. then we're closer to the end time, we're closer to Jesus returning, and we're closer to all moving on to heaven. If you have an opinion about the coronavirus and if you think it's related to the mark of the beast or if you think the sanctions that are being uh, put against countries in the Middle East are fair and warranted, we'd like to hear your opinion on this subject. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, uh, we'd like to invite you to do that right now and we look forward to seeing you next time.